Good morning, everybody. I figured I'd try to make another video because when I went through and looked through many of your answer keys, I still saw people were confused. And on top of that, uh, I saw a few common mistakes I wanted to address. So today we're going to go and figure this all out. And then tonight for homework and tomorrow's class time, you're actually going to have a small project. Don't worry, I will try to make it fun, even though it involves taking a velocity time graph and having to essentially make it into a position time graph for you to be able to solve it. Anyways, pay attention to these steps. The first thing I, I need to stress once again, and I'll repeat it in a second, is that you guys need to make sure to break these things down interval by interval. This graph was rather simple. Uh, there were only four intervals, so, you know, it wasn't that scary. But when you guys have more intervals, you're going to freak out. I don't need you doing that. As always, you just need to simplify these things and make them simple. So to start out, one of the things I need to do, though, on a velocity time graph, is I want you guys to draw a line at zero this line right here okay so draw that line at zero I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so I can touch all my tools on the side here anyways the reason I did that line is so now when I am trying to do those shapes that some of you have figured out how to do the shapes I just draw up to that line so I'm gonna keep this green my first box would be up to that line. So for interval one, let me just label these one, two, three, and interval four. Okay, for interval one, I'm just drawing this green box. Interval two. Now this is why I needed to make this. I saw quite a few people do this, and what they did for some reason is they drew another box right here and they calculated this box out and they did a height of four and a width of two and they added in an eight somehow there's no box there they just made that line up don't do that okay we don't want to do that at all we want to keep that all alone so just keep that line if you can see there's no area there's no area right about there okay there's no area it's just a line anyways back to our intervals so this should be a real easy box to figure out obviously if there's no height to it then the area must be zero. The only other box you need to draw that we can carry calculate the area of is this one. And then this last one I'm going to draw in a different color because you were finding the area to the curve. To do so you can find half of this rectangle. And once you find half of the rectangle, the area to the curve will be this green triangle. Now, what you need to do at this point is you find the height of each box and the width of each box. So, this one, right here, interval number one, we have a width of uh, I'm sorry, width of one second, and we have a height of two. If we did two times one, that is the area of that box. Okay, so two. However, it is below the curve. Now, the reason this is important is because some of you, what you did, and this brings us to our next step, was you took the total distance traveled, you added up all the numbers, and then you subtracted 2 from it. That's not what you do. That is a negative 2. By doing that, some of you got the wrong answer and you off by 2. 
negative 2 plus 4 is just 2. Okay? So some of you did 4 plus 2 minus 2 and got 4. That's not what you're doing. You just need to remember that that is a negative 2 in terms of position. You're 2 meters. You're going 2 meters backwards from the starting point before you even get going. So the first interval was negative 2. All right. This one I have a little bit more room to draw on. So uh, interval 3, we're going to solve. We'll do plus 0 for interval 2. For interval 3, the height of the box from here to here is 0 to 4. So the height is 4, and the width of it is from 3 to 6 by 3. 4 times 3 equals 12, and that's positive. So that's how we would do that. This is a positive 12. All right, so at the next point, we got to do the width of this box. It goes from 6, once again, to 10 for a total of 4 meters. And then the height of this goes from 0, once again, and I'll do this in red, 0 is the starting height. And then the top height is 4 for a height of 4. So this is 4 by 4. 4 times 4 equals 16. However, that's the whole box. So 16 divided by 2 gives me my 8 for that area right there. I should do that in blue. So now, these numbers that I'm writing down here is for number one, for, or I'm sorry, for number two, for how far I was displaced, because I have the negative two in there. So negative two plus zero is negative two, plus 12 is 10, plus eight is 18. So how much Kevin was displaced was 18. We're going to need that for our average velocity, because average velocity is displacement over time. If we were doing the total distance, which would help us with our average speed, this is where we ignore the negative 2. It's simply 2 plus 0 plus 12 plus 8 for a grand total of 22. In any case, that's what you guys needed to do for that uh, first two. For the total time traveled, let me clean this all up. Not as easy as the smart board. Well, you know what? Let me just get rid of all this. For the total time traveled, what we are going to do is just look at the total time of this entire graph. It started right here, and it ends right here. So the total time is simply 10. However, some of you, uh, if I ask the question maybe, what was the total time Kevin was moving? Well, then you might want to take a look at this interval right here, because he's not moving. And what you would do for that one is 10 minus 2 is 8 seconds. He was moving for a total of 8 seconds. But in this case, I was really only looking for 10 seconds. Now, to describe what's happening from 6 to 10, and some of you are still struggling with this, well, that line that we drew earlier that I erased... At zero. Does 
this line segment stay above zero? And the answer is obviously yes. And if it stays above zero, that means that this is a positive velocity, which means that the person, or Kevin, is moving forwards for this entire time. However, if you look, his speed was 4, then it was 3, then it was 2, then it was 1, and it approaches the speed of 0. Therefore, he's going 4 meters per second, then 3 meters per second, then 2 meters per second, then 1 meter per second. He's slowing down. So that's all that's happening is that he's moving forwards, slowing down. That's all you really needed to say. If you wanted to be truly impressive... You would have given me the acceleration, which you will be learning about in number seven in a bit. Um, so now we're on number, what was it, five. And this one confused people as well. I saw people get all of these right, and then they got to number five, and they couldn't do it. So, number five. We already know that he went 2 here, he went 0 here, but now we need to figure out how far has Kevin traveled after 5 seconds. And some people, the reason you got this wrong is because my wording was tricky and I did not clarify for that. Some of you actually did the time after 5 seconds. I meant up until 5 seconds, so let's just do this. We're going to find this box right here up until five seconds the height of this box once again is four the width of it goes from three to five which is two total of eight so how far he went was simply two plus zero plus eight equals ten that was Number five, uh, for his displacement, though, it was negative two plus zero plus eight is equal to, well, that's a total of six. Now, if the question said after five seconds, well, I would simply do the area of this this right here and this right here, and, you know, add those up. Or I could simply just do what I just have right now. My total distance would have been 12, because I'd do 22 minus this 10. And my total displacement would have been uh, just 18. Would have been 18 minus 6. Once again, 12, both are positive. Um, anyways, so that was number five. For Kevin's overall average velocity, we need to do total displacement over total time. So it was simply... Number. It was 18 over 10 seconds, which gives me 1.8 meters per second. Uh, and that is forward. That makes it my velocity. And for number 7, And I'm going to attach the actual answer key so you guys have it again. So for number seven, the acceleration. Now, this part is the tricky part. This is something you haven't learned yet. We need to find the acceleration during... It's getting messy, sorry. And I don't know why all the lines won't erase, but...
There we go. We want to find the acceleration during this interval right here. So to do so, acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. Um, or in other words, uh, I'll tell you in a second, but our units are meters per second and seconds. So how can we manipulate these units, meters per second and seconds, to get into meters per second squared? It's simple. You divide them. Meters per second divided by seconds over 1 comes up, goes down. Oh my goodness, you guys have done this before a thousand times. Anyways, you need to divide your speed by your time. But we have all these different speeds. We have four, we have one, two, three, four, and we have different times, obviously. So if you guys think about acceleration, you're probably thinking about something speeding up, getting faster and faster and faster. But what you're not realizing is that that is occurring over a period of time. So... What you need to do is your change in your speed divided by your change in your time. In this case, we started at 4, we end at 0, and it took a total of 4 seconds. So, we change by 4 meters per second over 4 seconds, which is equal to 1 meter per second squared. That's our acceleration. Um, for the position versus time graphs, please take a look at the answer keys provided. I recommend you do these interval by interval. Um, your starting position and starting distances should have been at zero. And I know some of you are still confused because we had those other fictitious graphs that started all over the place. In this scenario... We're going to just assume that Kevin is starting at a position of zero and then go and build on from there. Anyways, time stays the same in all of these and I hope this video is helping you guys a great deal. And tomorrow we will have a little fun with your project that will be posted later on today. So please keep an eye out for that. I uh, just need to make a few quick tweaks to it to make sure it's more exciting anyways i miss you guys i hope you had a great weekend i really wish we were in the classroom right now but obviously there's a whole lot going on out there uh stay safe stay healthy and hopefully we will get together in a, about a few weeks and i'll see you soon bye